I am unashamed. What about you? Yeah, so I was on the way home yesterday. And I stopped by and I got some dog food. Put in my truck, didn't think anything about it. Then got on the phone and I'm like, man, how rude is this person? Because their seatbelt, you know, they got these seatbelts now where if you don't have them on, it's baby, baby, baby. <laughs> I was like, Dad loves that. You know, I hate to just tell another person, look, I'm driving, I have my seatbelt on, and I'm talking to you, and you don't have your seatbelt on. I was like, I've got, I had to bring this up. No, number one, the sound was annoying. <laughs> Two, I just thought, put your seatbelt on. Where, what are you doing? <laughs> and so it just kept on, and finally I just thought, okay, it's going to be uncomfortable, but i got to have this talk. I was like, look, put your seatbelt on. And so you're talking to somebody on the phone? Yeah, they're they're in their vehicle. I got you. I'm in my vehicle. Yeah, but their thing keeps dinging. Their seatbelt keeps dinging, which is whatever we're talking about. It was about. And have you noticed now? Film. I don't know if this is the same one, but I've noticed the in the newer the model, it gets angrier and faster. Yeah, yeah. It okay. starts out like, "Hey, <clears throat> you forgot my seatbelt." Then it's like. You forgot the seat. I mean, like, if you could imagine this. <laughs> if it, it had a voice. If it had a voice, oh. it's like getting, like, really angry. It's like, <laughs> my, your nerve. put it on, put it on. Put my it buddy on. in Kansas, his is angry the whole time. <laughs> and I'm like, what is, what? you need to go get your vehicle looked into. And he's like, no, that push said, but I was like, quiet. I'm like, no, that's a good idea. You you have no option. I mean, you, either go crazy it. <laughs> or put your seat on. So I finally said it was a you know person on this the show we're filming. I was like, "Hey, look, put your seatbelt on. It's making me uncomfortable. I don't want you to have a wreck." And I, I went the safety route <laughs> instead of saying, "Hey, that's really annoying." <laughs> and she said, "I'm not in a car." Uh-oh. And then I just thought, I said, "Are you near one?" <laughs> she said, "No." Where's the racket emanating from? Well, now I'm like, I said, I, I, let me pull over. Because I look down, and I have my seatbelt on. Here's what happened. And I pull over, and we, we get tickled about it. <laughs> when I put the dog food in the passenger seat, oh. because of the weight, they <laughs> thought it was a person. They, as in the computer chip. So, <laughs> so your annoying sound was coming from your own. It was truck. coming from my own vehicle. <laughs> And so I said, hang on, I've got to put this dog food seatbelt on. I thought if somebody saw me right now, I have this bag of bag of dog food. The safest bag of dog food in the world. I'm protecting this. (laughs) If we have a wreck, I'm gonna be safe. And so is my dog food for my dog. But I remember now when they when the seatbelt laws first came out. Remember when in Louisiana, this is a long time ago, but you were like, you were like, no go. Like, this is infringing my right. It was like a Second Amendment issue. Do you remember that? You you were not happy I, about the seat. I belt. really wasn't happy either. And this first, is back, but, back in those days, there yeah. was no racket. So you had no recourse if you didn't put it on other than getting a ticket. But for I, it was years before you started putting the seat. Because I knew. It was the beginning of the mountain of rules. Yep. Yeah. Once you get people acclimated to do this, do that, I just knew there were more, more, and more rules coming. But having now, was I, was look, I now, correct? Yeah, but, but <laughs> you were very. You no, know, it was a good rule because they were previewing the current crisis we talked about on last podcast of the cell phone while driving issue. So now that that's come about, I'm like, oh, the seatbelt law is a must. We have to have the seatbelt issue because people are not paying attention while they're driving. Although there's now there's laws against that, right? I mean, if you're um, yes, if you're but they're not enforcing them. If they would, because imp- look, I could write at least a dozen tickets a day <laughs> from here to my house. There's now laws that you must have your face covered. That's right. Some kind of mask. It's not really laws, but mandates. You're right. I mean, 
Yeah. What do you mean not real laws? Well, because it's not a law. You can't well, get on this plane. They're not going to. But think. it's not a law unless Congress or a, or a state yeah. legislature they're not, makes it. You're not going to jail without the mask. Right. Depravity. They, they say law, but it's a mandate. Well, it's different. like they'll kick you out of the airplane. The, depravity right. has all kinds of manifestations. And even in the, in the when Paul wrote to mic. the, Paul wrote to the uh, Corinthians, in other words, I've written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all, I mean the people of this world who are immoral, or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. He brings this up in chapter 5. He brings it up again. Don't be deceived. These are the greedy, drunkards, slanderers, swindlers. He he keeps going with these people with these kind of attitudes. And it had come down into the church and was it was there. Right. Well, out of all the places you want to God's people should be in, shouldn't be involved with this type of behavior. It's more than clear. In fact, he says they won't do they they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Right. You know, but it's an interesting. He said, that's what some of you were, right? So, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified. In the name well, he of the says Lord that Jesus. in six. Yeah, later we get. He's to saying there's not like something you can't crawl out of, but get off of each other's back and all this nonsense. You know, you know when you when someone is swindled, you know you think they were somehow or another, and they were cheating them, and then they were swindling them. I don't know whether they were slicking them out of their money. I, I, you know, I mean, it's been two thousand years ago. We're looking at a culture. I would say it's we're in a culture two thousand years after that, and I'm seeing a lot of carrying on. But well, uh, and back to the original, what we were talking know, they're about. They're calling you on the phone trying to get your, you know, they say trying to get you to give them your social security number. People are calling other people, and they get on it. Then they get on the internet, and they're back and forth, you know. And it, I mean, there's a lot of ways we have some of our sponsors where people are slicking you out of your money. I mean, there's a lot of swindling going on yeah. via the Internet. And this is saying here 2,000 years ago in a society and a culture that were nowhere near the ours, but but the same thing was going on. Yeah, I mean, because human nature is human nature. I, Whatever period of time you're talking about. What and so, say? I was going to say that the, the point is, to, the big point you're talking about, is you would rather people make a decision to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And we were talking about seatbelts. I mean, you're safer with a seatbelt. I mean, no I think that's true. Yeah, that's true. But I would rather it be that people have the choice. But you know what? If it's a law, it's a law. But they made a law for that. So I'm like, okay. I mean. Well, and that's a, your physical well-being, which I guess would imply your spiritual and emotional. <laughs> but, I mean, if you're dead, you're dead. But. Right. I, I mean, I think statistically that's not not a bad law. But I, I'm saying I was saying they. I wish they would do with the same vigor. Yeah. About the cell phone, because to me, I'm seeing that every day. So inside this body of believers, I'm still on this. When he says uh, the greedy, the drunkards, slanderers, nor swindlers, and that's what some of you were. So they came out of these backgrounds, and this is the way they were. And now it's kind of been brought over into the kingdom of God in the church. Right. So, and he's trying to get to the bottom of it. And I think that's why he finally ends up this, the, the ram, the solution for it. I think is by the time you get over to first Corinthians 13, toward the end of the chapter, he reminds them of the gospel and he, and he, and he tells them what love really is. And, and does no harm to his neighbor. It's patient. It's right. kind. It doesn't keep record of wrongs. Well, you just start going down the list and you say, you know, in any culture, if, if, if they love one another and love is patient, I mean, it, it does not boast and all these things about it, you know, and it's pretty a detailed thing. Keeps no record of wrong. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It always protects, always hopes, and love never fails. So the solution to the problem at Corinth, in my humble opinion, they just 
they, 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 they didn't know what love, that's almost like they didn't even know what it was, but surely they did. I mean, we're 2,000 years later. I mean, you see a pretty mischievous culture we're in right now. <laughs> You know, I, I wrote a book about it, about they're just trying to cancel anybody and everybody and right. find out where you went wrong and never forget it the rest of the, the rest of time, I guess. So, well, and you got to understand the, the Corinthian I church. I simply say not much change, not, not, not a whole lot of change. The Corinthian church was, was, I mean, you, everything we've read up to now, they're, they were definitely, they're immature. They're new Christians. I mean, they, the church hadn't been around very long. That's right. Well, I so, keep wondering the same thing where were the elders well but think about it you don't have any yet exactly <laughs> that's what i'm saying and right. so it makes more sense that because in this specific chapter which i know zach left before we got to first Corinthians five because it <laughs> it's i mean let's face it this is worse than pg-13 what right. i'm going to read but it's like they he he has this report that they're is sex and immorality, which is sex that's not right. You know, right sex is defined by Jesus, Matthew 19. And by the way, uh, Jace, so so this one of those, because I'll hear people say, well, the Bible doesn't talk about, and then they'll bring up some sort of sexual behavior. But you understand, when there, when the Jesus clearly lays out in, in Matthew that it's sex is between a husband and a wife. That's that's what he sanctioned. He said that's what we need to do. And he went all the way back to Genesis two. So therefore, anything else is is a no go. So you know what I'm saying. You don't have to come up with every example of every possible. Although you go back and read well, Leviticus, he, that's why know. he laid out the standard in Matthew nineteen. Right. That for this. I want to make that point because a lot of people are like, well, I, I mean, I talked to a pastor one time. And he was like, well, the Bible, Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. Being simple, and I said, well, sure. You well, but I think the whole point of this, Al. Is I mean, this was the situation. Two different conversations, though, because he addresses to the world in verse nine, which what was Phil was reading. But he was saying his point was not really nothing has changed. He was saying if someone claims to be in Jesus and a part of the body of Christ, there's a different conversation here that's fiction to occur. That's his whole point. When he got down talking about not associating with the swindlers and, and all those. He was saying, I'm not talking about them. In that case, you'd have to dig a hole and hide in it. I mean, he didn't say it. What did he say? You'd have to leave the world? Yeah. Yeah. In that case, you'd have to leave the world. But he was saying, I'm writing you that you not you, you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but who is sexual, moral, greedy, idolater. With with such a man, don't even eat. It's a different conversation. I think that's what the world, when they hurl persecutions on people of faith, right. they they miss that. But you I know, wasn't I got, talking about people in the world. I'm talking about people that claim to be Christians, that claim they can live a lifestyle outside of the standard Jesus well, said. Most, well, well, exactly. Most that's people, what I'm trying to read the right. text. You got Matthew 19, sex between a man and woman. Well, the Apostle Paul elaborates on it when, when you get to chapter 7 over here, and he even talks about how often you have sex, which is pretty amazing. And it's pretty interesting on one of the points he makes. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent. And for our time, you say, well, like um, if you were going to so pray. Yes, yeah, so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again. And he and then he makes an interesting point, so that Satan <clears throat> will not tempt you because of your lack of self control. He did say, "I say this as a concession, not as a command." He said, "Look, you just had to be wise." He was just giving them advice, a sound advice. Yep. But most people w- wouldn't think that uh, God would delve into something so. Uh, so what's would be the well, word? Well, he designed it. Intimate. It's so intimate. But he does how often you have sex. And I'm I read that, I thought, boy. But he did say, look, I'm not gonna bind you, but I'm just saying, and and you look at it, you say, you know, out of control, uh, sex can get you know, sex can get out of control. Well, and, and people are right, the temptation is so bad. Let's let's take a break. 
So uh, one of our sponsors that that I really like and um, have just had great experiences with is a, is a group called Forty Days for Life, and uh, just spent some time with them up in D.C. when Lisa and I were doing the March for Life, and I just love what they stand for. I mean, they're they're really just kind of in the gap. Their first place that they had was in College Station, across from a Planned Parenthood. And a lot of you have heard of Abby Johnson. She she was a work. She was the director of Planned Parenthood. But because of this group, they were able to share Jesus with her. She becomes a Christian now. She's a pro life advocate, which is really great because she knows the ins and outs of you know oh, yeah. all the Planned Parenthood stuff. Awesome. So this, this is a great group. We love them. Um, they've helped two hundred and twenty one actually abortion workers. They've helped them find Jesus. So they're doing a great work. They've come. They've written a book called What to Say When, The Complete New Guide to Discussing Abortion. And so they want you to have, you know, a tool that you can use in discussion and debate with people because, you know, obviously this is a a very divided issue in our culture. So it's good to know, you know, what you're talking about. So check them out. I highly recommend it. You can go to Amazon or you can get it directly from them at 40daysforlife.com. So that's 40daysforlife.com. Not only get the book, but also see what you can do uh, to help support this organization. They're fantastic. Well, somebody said you you know a male has a some kind of sexual thought every seven or eight seconds. Yeah, right. So and and I believe God designed it. He's the creator of the universe. That was His idea. And when you see the childbirth process, you're like, there must be a God. How could this have just happened? I mean, it's crazy. So that's why I brought up the Matthew 19 when it said, uh, and God created them male and female and for this reason a man will leave his father and mother be united to his wife two will become one flesh i mean i was just throwing out there flippantly that's why he discusses it and then he's like that's sex that is right it's god sanctioned i've said yep. many times a shame free you take two people that have never had sex man and a woman they get married and they have their sex between each other it's shame free guilt free disease free comparison free it's good. I mean, it's God sanctioned sex, which that makes people feel uncomfortable, but you have to have that conversation. You on the internet browsing around, you know, having sexual experiences with yourself. I don't browse I, around on the internet. You know, I'm just speaking to the most people. I understand. Most people do. Yep. I'm saying that that gets a hook in them that then disturbs their perception of women. Because these people are doing that for money. They're they're swindlers. And they're using the the sexual immoral market to make money. Young, immature, usually males, well, they're just not going to be able to turn this down because it's so quick and easy and they're wondering that we all go through that when process. When they start so our, much earlier now because of, you know, easy exposure. But so, you know, but I'm saying it that's, distorts their view of what God had in mind right. and how a woman, she's not your wife, is not laying around all day wondering, you know, how she can make you happy sexually, you know. I mean, <laughs> but that, but people think that if they go to the internet and say, "Well, look at what these women are doing," yeah, somebody got paid somewhere for you to be watching that. You follow me? It's yeah. like so. Then they have a. They have a uh, manipulated view of a woman and just treat her as something. An object. Uh, yeah, an object that's supposed to please satisfy them sexually. Well, guess how long that marriage is going to last? Not long. Yeah. So, and you have the opposite of two people who love their creator and you, 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 you have a spiritual foundation first. All the great qualities that make you successful in every aspect of life. Love, joy, peace, patience, you know, perseverance, faithfulness, self-control. All these things. Well, you I've build, said, build a relationship on that. That's why Christian believers should have, and they don't always have, it. they should have a huge advantage over the world because of just the Christian lifestyle, as, no as we're talking about. In other words, if my wife is also my sister in Christ, how could I not treat her with respect? And I you mean, read the First Corinthians thirteen. I mean, that should it be was the... not by accident that the, around Corinth the venereal disease was a a big problem because religion in the in the old temple of Aphrodite re, religion was tied into prostitution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was your so obviously we had some major yeah you know, m- major problems, but so. but 
finished reading the this well, particular that, I, problem. Yeah, I feel like we've gotten. Yeah, we. I mean, we, we First ventured. Corinthians five was more about those two different conversations. I mean, so so we yes, they were immature. Where were the leaders? And then Paul just drops this bombshell and says, "There's actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and of a kind that does not even occur among the pagans. A man has his father's wife." So now, if you just stop right there, you're like, "Do what?" Now, I believe this is completely my opinion, but based on my investigation into the Greek culture at that time and me being over there. There was this pursuit of the ultimate athlete, and they would have camps. They'd divide the boys and girls, like in Sparta, and they were training, and they were started mating. They would dictate who was going to do the mating to try to come up. It's it's just like you're trying to get bigger deer or anything else. You a good you, breed of horses. Good, yeah. Eugenics. Yeah. They started doing that with humans, and I really think the Sparta influence in that was what would make this a thing back then. I mean, it doesn't seem that crazy for us to read that down. You're like, there's a guy in the church sleeping with his mom or stepmom. stepmom, But I'm like, if you were so driven by becoming the ultimate physical specimen, I could see how you could be so self-absorbed with doing that. You're like, you know what? The best bloodline is this bloodline, and where you're trying to create the ultimate right. physical specimen. Yeah. So I never thought about that, but that could be true. Hey, that's my opinion, but I I think it one. makes more sense in that it's not like Greece is, was a big country logistically, and Sparta wasn't what seventy eighty miles from here. Right. I mean, I I just think that's what was going on. Of course, it was interesting that Paul points out that even even non-believers don't typically do this i mean well, like, right he but pointed it out as being a very egregious situation yeah. what well, made me go down that road is that next phrase when he says and you're proud so it wasn't like this was i was like well how could they be proud of that and that's why the more i read about the history and what was going on and trying to bring up the they were just they, saying working on the seed line I, I i really think that makes more sense than anything i read yeah because everything else i read was just <laughs> You know, I mean, now look, they somebody could have got it right, and I could be totally wrong. I mean, I'm just giving you my opinion. But I was trying to but let's figure face out it, why it, they're proud of this. In any culture, when you hear about an incestuous relationship, and it happens all the time, unfortunately, I mean, it turns your stomach over some because it's just not, that's not normal. That's what I mean. Yeah. Why are they proud of it? Right. I mean, that makes no sense. You, you're right. There would have to be some reason well, why. Yeah. So so while that's what led me to look for the reasoning, because yeah. I was like, why would you be proud of this? And then when I read about that, I don't have it just at the ready. When I, I taught this book or letter a few years ago in a class, and uh, I did, I, I had all that research and I read it. But it was pretty graphic, you know, what they were doing, which is what I'm saying. They were separating the boys and girls, and they were picking out the two best athletes. Didn't matter if that was your sister or your cousin. Y'all are together. And by the way, they didn't mind chunking them over the cliff if exactly. something was wrong it, with them. It's horrific what was going on there. So I think that makes sense. Look, if you have an, a different reasoning, I don't really think it matters one way or another. But the fact uh-huh. is, I know this was going on because Paul's bringing it up inspired by the Holy Spirit. He said, shouldn't you rather have been filled with grief? Because that's what it was more about. It was yeah. the attitude, you have this going on, and you're not even upset about it. And so he's the underlying theme is there's a standard by which Jesus presents once you surrender to him. and you Because you think about it. You surrender to Christ. You have the mind of Christ. All these things we're saying, this relationship, he knows your motives of your heart. Everything that's led up to right here. And now all of a sudden you have this going on in your church and in their family, that specific family, but then everybody else seems to be proud of it and they're supporting them. So he's making it clear that there's a different conversation, attitude, and response to sin that should occur once you're in Jesus. Correct. And I'm making a key point about this because when I go into the real world, modern world now, when I'm with unbelievers, I'm not getting up there and talking about the choices they're making. I'm not doing it. I'm giving them a presentation of Jesus. I may refer to a few things, you know, use some uh, 
things about the creator and the evidence and, and the guilt of, of bad choices, because everybody is a, sin, is a sinner. But based on what I'm reading here, once you get them in Jesus, he's the one that teaches them to say no. That verse, grace teaches mm-hmm. us to say no. He's the one that's going to change their heart and, and mind about the decisions they make and the relationships they pursue. So it does no good to go out here and stand on a street corner and bash whatever these different kind of sexual sins or whatever. To me, that only makes the makes it worse. Yeah. If somebody don't know Jesus, that. <laughs> Uh, and so he's later going to get to that, but, but I'll, I'll keep reading. You're right. You have an expectation there. Let's take another break. So we found out from our friends at Omega, uh, Dad, that I didn't know this, that you have 360 joints that start from the neck and go all the way down to your feet. A lot of joints. A lot of joints, which means there's a lot of potential for inflammation and problems. So the older we get, uh, the the more inflammation affects that. So what they do is they help your body. When you're younger, you produce something called SPMs. And when you get older, not so much. So this product helps produce that in your body. And as, as Dad says, there's from the pristine waters of New Zealand, which are these muscles that they grow that provide this muscle. So it's really good. Uh, we highly recommend it. It's been a really good product for us. And uh, you can check them out, omegaxl.com slash fill. You're going to go there and you buy a bottle, you get the second bottle for free, which gives you a couple of months, which is about how long it takes to really build up in your system and, and start working really well. Omegaxl.com slash fill. Or you can call them at 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Check them out. So verse 3 says, For though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit, and I've already passed judgment on the one who did this, just as if I were present. Now, he made that phrase there. He said, I passed judgment on him. So a lot of people say, whoa, I thought we weren't supposed to judge people. Well, that's a good question because he's going to explain that. Mm-hmm. But verse 4 is my point, what I think should be stressed here. And the point being, when you're in Jesus, there's a different conversation about lifestyle and decisions when you are assembled in the name of our lord jesus and i am with you in spirit and i love this phrase and the power of our lord jesus is present so he's making a point of that which is is makes this different we have the jesus christ resurrected from the dead appealing on our behalf at the right hand of god when we come together in his name, he, his power is present. Correct. I think that's a, that is a great idea to put in their head. It's not like you're just gathered here to do whatever. I mean, the power of Jesus Christ is here. So then he says, hand this man over to Satan. And here's what's incredible. So that the sinful nature may be destroyed and his spirit saved on the day of the Lord. The only reason you're confronting this fellow in the name of Jesus, who claims to be walking with Jesus, but is having this relationship go on. The only reason you would say no and would put him out of your fellowship if he would not entertain the thought that a a Jesus lifestyle has different standards is to try to eventually save him. You just can't operate like you're God when you've surrendered to God. Yep. Right. There's a God and we're not him. That's it. So then he goes on just to make the point of, of to get to the point about the different conversation. He said, he said, your boasting is not good. So that goes back to the reference of verse two when he says, and you're proud of this. Right. He was more upset, which this sounds crazy, about their attitude toward it than actually what had happened, which was a, was a should make anybody's stomach churn. But he's like, one thing to do that it's another thing you're just like look at us which then goes back to my point about i do think they were trying to build the world's greatest physical human specimen don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast as you really are for christ our passover lamb has been sacrificed 
Therefore, let us keep the festival not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with bread without yeast, the bread of sincerity and truth. That's all he's saying is we if if you can't have a conversation with this guy and and if he does not want to relent or if he's going to go around boasting about it, we're, we're just not going to be able to fellowship. This is a, this is a deal breaker is what, what he's saying. It's not that he can't be saved. He, we just read that. We, we need to make this a deal breaker because he surrendered to Jesus. He's claimed to be a part of our body and he's living the exact opposite and has a, the exact opposite attitude about it. So then he comes up with this caveat. He said, now, because I guarantee you he knew, and they still do, they took this way too far or could take it too far in any kind of culture. Because he says, now I've written you in my letters not to associate with sexual moral people. He just, he, just, he just wrote it. Not at all meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and the swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave the world. And to Phil's point, right here is where you insert this. God and us, truly, we truly love everybody. Why did why does he want them to disfellowship the son? Because they eventually want him to be saved because they love him. But he's calling right wrong and wrong right. That won't work in Jesus. Then he says, I'm not even talking about the people of the world. So then he says in verse 11, but now I'm writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother who's sexual, immoral, greedy, idolater, slander drunkard, swindler, with such a man don't even eat. So it's a different conversation. So you're like, so just to fast forward that, y'all brought up you know, homosexuality or swindlers. Look, I have friends in the world who fit all these categories. Sure. And I am friendly with them. Yep. And you say, oh, no, what are you doing? Are you sanctioning that? I'm, I said, I am being a friend and a lover of people, and I'm not judging them. Yeah. I we try to present them Jesus as quickly as possible, not based on their lifestyle. It's just no matter who's in earshot, that's what I'm going to do and have a Jesus conversation. But then he he closes, and then we can talk about it to, to finish up. He does say something that's contrary to what a lot of churches believe today because a lot of people say you never should judge. But he's actually saying judgment is something you do. Yep. Peter said it, the same thing. In the church, what business is it of it? What business? business is it of mine to judge those outside the church so what's the understood answer none it's none of your business right that's right are you not to judge those inside understood answer is yes yes so that's why when when the world sometimes says don't judge me i say yeah you're right <laughs> but now i'm gonna have a conversation with jesus and let you figure that out because god will judge you yeah yeah I mean, I'm going to point you to the one who's the ultimate judge. But now once you claim to be in Christ, there's a different set of standards here. And you caused it when you surrendered. I mean, God ultimately caused it because he pricked your heart and he loved you, and it's a positive thing. But what I'm saying is we've all had these conversations with young Christians who are doing something like this, maybe not quite as ghastly, but... And then we have a conversation. Hey, hey, I thought you you made Jesus the Lord of your life. How come you're, we've gotten reports that you're commode, hugging, drunk, and back to dealing drugs and prostitution and what we've all had these conversations. And they're like, well, what are you judging me? And you're like, yes, <laughs> you're, you're my sister. You're my brother. Yes, I'm judging you. And again, it's, but I love you and I want right. you to go to heaven. I want you to have a productive life. And that's the concept he brings in about the yeast, which I thought was really interesting in this particular context, which seems like more of a, a I mean, I don't know whether this person was a Jew or a Gentile initially. I'm assuming Gentile, to your point. But he uses a very old illustration. He goes all the way back to the Passover. That's what he, you know, the, he didn't by accident say the Passover lamb. Then he talked, because, you know, they had the unleavened bread, and the idea was, I don't want you mixing in with this mindset in Egypt. I want you coming out of that. So I thought it was interesting uh -huh. that he used that illustration in this particular story. I mean, I, I don't know if the Gentiles would have gotten it as, as easily. Yeah, I, I, I really just, 
He was in I, on the I, I blood of sure. Jesus, and they were referring to that. He said right. that's the difference between him and Well, him. you know, he talks about the supper later in chapter 11. Yep. So I, I'm sure he was teaching as he went, you know, that the mm-hmm. supper was actually representative of the Passover. Just, you know, now it's what they, and they were having problems with that. <laughs> Remember the, how they were getting along with each other? Exactly. Let's take, let's take another We've break. dealt with, with this before. Sometimes when you're young, uh, you don't think about things like insurance, life insurance, things like this. And that's really when you can get the best deals. You know, if you wait till you get older, you got to pay a lot more money. And we have a new sponsor called Policy Genius uh, that really helps you to be able to get the best, you know, policy for your life insurance. So we want you to check these guys out. Um, you can click a link in the description or head to policygenius.com slash fill. They're going to give you a few questions. You're going to answer those, and you can save up to 50% more on your life insurance by comparing your quotes with Policy Genius. So they give you that good comparison. Licensed experts that are there to help you understand. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you every step of the way. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees. They don't sell your info to third parties. Thousands of five star reviews. So check them out. Policy Genius dot com slash fill to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com slash fill to get your free life insurance quotes. Check out your savings. And uh, one of them uh, that we still work with and we help fund uh, his, his mission. But uh, at one time, you know, we said, I was a woman about three years. Mm-hmm. He said, and I said, who told you that? Who told you you were a woman and not a man? Your biology says you're a man. He said, the evil one. And he said, I bought into it. Yep. So he showed me pictures of when he was a, a man, but acting like a woman or looking like one. Right. He had all these procedures. And well, look. <laughs> drugs and what's first one thing or another. But now he's just as faithful as he can be. And. Because he came to Jesus. Every time he comes through here, he'll stop over, you know, we'll talk it over, have a little meal. Say, keep up the good work, man. Slip him a little cash, gas, money, whatever. So we support him. Well, just straight. a couple of days ago, somebody sent me an article and said they're, you know, they're threatening a lawsuit against M&Ms because the characters, yeah, they don't have enough gender. It's just male or female. Yeah. Like, we need, we need more. We need to be not sure about that particular color what he or she is yeah i thought it was a joke <laughs> that's true and then i went and looked at the internet and i was like nope this is that's a real true. story yeah somebody's job is to go around somebody's getting paid which i think this is contributing to the lack of the workforce right somebody's getting paid to go look at companies and say no this you got you actually have a female M M&M and M and a male on a commercial. That ain't gonna work. <laughs> we yep. need more questioning of our. So M&M. that's why when people, you know, I was talking to a CEO of a outdoors uh, type company. Why you there, Jace? Not, not much has changed when it comes to these matters: the homosexual behaviors, the the, well, what was the we're going to deal with gender issues. The male prostitutes, the, the, the adulterers, All right. the idolaters. The the, well, that's what I was going to say. Not a whole lot has changed but, in, in 2,000 years. No, Would you agree with that? Me, I agree. He was telling me he could not find. He, they're having trouble because they'll hire a worker, and they're like, I mean, you want me to stock these shells all day? <laughs> they're like, yeah, we'll pay you for it. <laughs> I mean, it's like too much work. He's like, I'm not kidding. <laughs> One right after another, they're like, I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of work. <laughs> they're like, yeah, we're gonna pay you to lift things and put it on that shelf. They're like, no. <laughs> He's one right after another. He was he was uh, venting at me, saying, "What is wrong <laughs> with these people?" <laughs> and so this M M&M and M thing came up, and he's like, "There are people. It's a." People are looking for jobs like that. They're yeah. just sitting at their house, watching commercials on the internet, and they're like, "Up, oh, we got a problem here." 
Let's do something we about it. Got to redesign yeah. the M&M. They're getting paid for that. That's like a job now in our society is to look at digital things and then make an assumption on a spiritual matter for for our culture. And people will pay you. There he is, Jace. I just wrote a book on it. It's coming out in about a month. <laughs> the cancel culture. They yeah. they either go with the ideology. Or you get canceled. Yeah. You be with us or we cancel you. And then they try to take your job, your livelihood, your life, your kin folks attack, anything that w- any any way to get back at you. Your platform to it's speak that, to people. Oh yeah. 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 Well, it's it's a it's a terrible thing. But but when you think about it, his example of the yeast that works through the dough is is exactly what you have to watch out for. That is your point, Jay's worldly thinking. Once introduced into the body and not dealt with, becomes acceptable, and that's yeah. what was happening here. But what I what I get upset about though, because look, there's a lot of things that we can talk about here, but a lot of religious people, you know, they they go out and talk about the issues, but they're not talking about Jesus. I, I I'm like, I agree, or, or they just use Jesus as a stepping stone to talk about the issues. Now, the only exception to those issues that I have is uh, the right to life, because I think in that case, you're representing someone who can't represent themselves. I mean, they're in a womb. I mean, somebody has to rise up and says, well, wait a minute. Yeah. But but all these other issues, you know, about what adults do in, in, in their, you know, private bedrooms, you know, and I've said this, and it just burns religious people up, but I'm like, I personally don't care. I don't care what they're doing. It's not like, because they're like, why do you care what I'm doing? I'm like, I don't. (laughs) But Jesus cares about you. God cares about you. There's a way to live forever. There's a way to have a foundation where you make different decisions. So once they're introduced to Jesus and once they say, you know what? I think they're, I want to live forever. I want God's grace. I want a purpose. I want a family. I want all this. Once that happens, now we're going to talk about these issues, right. because if you're doing something that is contrary to what he wants for you, well, we got to have a conversation. I mean, to me, that's the little yeast. He was like, you first have to have a conversation because you don't want this catching on. You don't want to be applauding that your son is having sex with his mom. You're applauding that? That's so right. that's why I said when you add in the element of being self-absorbed, and I think you have references that give those clues, like when he said in First Corinthians nine about man with the illustration about don't you know that all the runners run but only one gets the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training because that was the there was two things that were really big in Greece back then: the getting an army. And these Olympic games, which was where our Olympic, the whole idea of the Olympics came from. And to do both of those things, to try to create a physical specimen, the ultimate physical specimen, which is still still something that people are trying to do today. Fixated on it. You know, I mean, when you get down ground level on a, at a football game, you're looking around and saying, well, they've been eating or drinking. You know, I mean, it's just like, wow, what a physical specimen. But th- so they were the idea of somebody trying to do it as a society. Look, that's been going on since the beginning of the time. Uh, let's take another break. You know, but one thing, Jace, I mean, just, you know, totally being honest here, I mean, there are groups, you know, there are groups that, that claim to be believers, that claim to be God's church, that have embraced a lot of cultural stuff yep. concerning immorality and different things and said, you know what, here we're not going to address that. Our leadership can be a part of it, whether it's trans stuff or you know gay marriage or whatever. I mean, it, it's pretty rampant in our culture. It is. The entire You're organization. The church has changed their... They they got away from what God said yeah. to then say well, culturally. To me, but, I, I know why they to did me, it. To me, you got to call them out because it's not right. I mean, again, inside the body, I'm saying I you mean, claim to be a believer, 
you can't say square this up and say so my pastor is is going to be live with a man or a woman if they're a woman. I mean, I agree, but I think in the I mean, I, I'm saying greater, we should judge that inside the church. I, I agree. I agree, hundred <clears throat> percent. And, and not in the world because I'm with you. Worldly. That that worldly. that's my point. You, you can't the, these people, and I'm sure they're using them on the internet. I don't know. I don't read it on these religious things, but they these these people that go in and try to get in all these conversations over social issues or behavioral issues or whatever. And I'm like, you're not going to fix, you're not going to fix it that way. You're not going to have a fundamental argument about gender and change anybody's mind on anything. My, my whole point was the, you, you have to go at it with Jesus as the crux because that was God's idea of how to communicate right. with the world. And, and my point once, is, once no, that conversation happens, then you can branch out. If you're if you're listening to Unashamed podcast, and I know because there's a lot of different groups represented, and the group you're with has adopted these type policies, then I wouldn't stay with that group. I would get out of there. That's I mean, to me, that's yeast from the world that has infected the body. I think that's I, good advice. I mean, I think that's good fair. advice. Yeah, but at the same time, I, you're right. We have to let people know who Jesus is. Because if without Jesus and the Holy Spirit, which is where we started in First Corinthians, without the message of the cross and the wisdom of the Spirit, you're never going to discern. And properly. well, the, and it's a false narrative if someone says, "Well, you're just telling me this because you don't love me." I said, "Oh, I'm telling you this because I do love you." Correct. That's what I'm That's showing. What you. I was going to say, because I think so, now this is my opinion. Could be wrong. I think the groups you're referring to, the religious groups who watered down. The, what God said about behavior. I think they did it because they couldn't find a path to love. They're like, well, wait a minute. We're supposed to love everybody. And so if we if we come down on particular groups, because they say it's you know based on science, or there's, there's a few exceptions in our world where someone is born and you're not sure. Right. And look, I'm all for surgeries and let's make a decision and go with it. But for the most part, and I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but it's the 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 most vast most majority. Yeah. You're either a male or a female. We get it. Now let's take the exceptions and we'll have some different conversations right. or whatever about what to do. But I'm like, in this case, when we read First Corinthians five, I didn't have some agenda I was trying to lean toward. I saw a spirit of love in every person that was mentioned. The world, yep. The w- guilty in the church because he wanted them saved. Yeah, they they were only now. That's I think the difference in what I've seen with some of these groups. They want to kick people out, and they do it in meanness and hatred. It's just the spirit of it, and so I'm like, just as bad as he, this group, this family was in being proud of the bad behavior. If you're disfellowshipping disfellowship in someone in a mean we're we're trying to set a precedent that God is our moral compass and we want these people to realize I mean kind of like you do your kid when you you know you don't you don't enjoy popping his hand if he's fixed a touch of but burning it. stove you know but I'm going to do it cuz why I don't. I want him to realize that will hurt you. Look, I'm the. I'm sitting here as the prime example of this. I mean, I was disfellowshipped out of our family at 17 years old. You were. I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. Yeah, because and it was my behavior. I mean, it had gotten to the point where everybody recognized it. It was not what God wanted. It was not what our family was about. And look, I'll confess, since you're opening this up, <laughs> I had a terrible attitude because when when they said get out of here, I said. Good riddance. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I hope he never I comes did, back. <laughs> but I did it in mean because you were y'all were pretty mean to me. You know, oh, you yeah. and your buddy. Well, it was terrible. Y'all, y'all were terrible. Which is why I've never held it against you, Dad. Look, because I owned it. But the conversation you had with me is the conversation Paul's having with this church. That's correct. It's you can't stay here. Now you didn't say leave and never come back. No. You said. You, if you need to leave and go figure out whatever you got to figure out, then go. But you're not going to be able to live the way you're living and stay here. And so I made a decision to go. And after about a year of, you know, like a dog chasing his tail and about get killed in New Orleans, I figured out, you know what? 
I probably, you know, home wasn't so bad, you know? I mean, that whole lifestyle that I walked away from yeah. was actually pretty secure. And I came back. So when I came back, what did I get? Even from Jay's, I got accepted. The point is, and Jason's point, is you never want to wall them off to where there is no escape. Or uh, there's no pathway The home. next chapter, uh, the one I quoted to the old GQ man, and uh, all the slanderers, nerve swindlers, and, uh, with no homosexual offenders, male, they're not they're going to end the kingdom. And that's what some of you were. He uses that to let them know, look, a lot of y'all used to do these same things, but but it's gone now. You were washed, probably speaking of the baptism. You were sanctified, set apart. Right. You, you, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. He shows them, we're not giving you something that there's not a way out. There's a way out. Right. Just straighten it up and then come out of there. Quit behaving like that because... Y'all come from some tough backgrounds. God forgave you. Right. You know, Jesus, number one. You, you can get out of your life, so it's never too late. But I've told that before, Dad. Whenever I'm sharing my <clears throat> testimony, my story, I always say, you know, my dad, it wasn't hate speech no. by him telling me your behavior needs to change. That was love speech. And But it yeah. took me a year to figure that out. And so that's the same thing with people you share with. I mean, they may initially take it as you're judging me or, you know, whatever. But look, truth is truth. And if their heart is right and they come around, then they'll understand that later. But not everybody understands it immediately, especially when you're trapped in sin, which mm -hmm. I was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. I mean, I think it's a great illustration. Exactly the illustration. But that's why I said when you throw in the immaturity and you look at how you treat your kids and sometimes you got to make difficult decisions, not that you don't love them. Right. You're like, this This is not going to work here. You're representing our family. I mean, you say the same thing in your in your family dynamic that he was saying, well, we're God's family. They're like, you're celebrating something that even the pagans are like, Woof. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, because the bottom line is, and he's going to get to it in 1 Corinthians 12, bottom line is Christ is our head. We're the body. Right. We're connected. He's the head. That's where the decisions are being made, and the body is following, and we're all a part of it, whether you're a thumbnail, you know, or a calf. I mean, this is how it is. You're not representing the head yeah, here. This is exactly right. And you can have more than enough sexual activity doing it God's way. Well, exactly. He's not. It's not like he's saying we're gonna. I'm gonna punish you. And hold, and yeah. but you got to hold your sex just to one person, or just they're, like you can. They're never like you're talking to me. I just <clears throat> I can't have sex, but with one person, that's, that's it. But you can have all you want. And there's some reasons why, which we'll we'll talk about later. I found out it was plenty plenty for me. Yeah, and it is it is especially when me the, and y'all's mother. When the, <laughs> something we love talking about. Yeah. Uh, you know, luckily, we're out of time uh, before we go there. But I did want to mention that we're about to go into OT, which is our uh, unashamed overtime and uh, th you can get this material uh, from blaze tv.com slash unashamed and not just this material but you get everything that blaze offers including dad's 800 episodes of in the woods and a lot of other great things too but if you do this by february 7th you're gonna save some money it's 15 dollars off a one-year subscription and the code is more unashamed m-o-r-e unashamed so check it out. Uh, we're going into OT, and we'll talk a little bit more about what we talked about today. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube, and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.